boy. Okay. TV's off. Lights, I hope, are adjusted right. I think I found a uh, technique is turn that one on and this one off when I'm sitting here. <sighs> well, I've been outside. It's 8.30 and I am really tired out tonight. I uh, have a feeling that the neighbor lady next door was a cat that I kind of look out for now and again. I think she's sick. I have a feeling. I have really good intuition. It's not always right on, but it's generally, generally pretty good. And then there's other times that I have a really negative feeling about something and turns out it wasn't bad after all. But usually it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, not that I like intuition. I don't think that's a good word. I think it's really God's Holy Spirit with Christians. It's God's Spirit in us that alerts us to things or um, stirs us up to something. And sometimes it's something really good. Not always negative. It's not always bad. Okay, guys, I want to uh, get the stories done in the past so I can get on to the kids. I started the kids, and then I found this list that James had written years ago about some of the important things that happened when the kids were teens or even before that. So they're, they're important things, and I'm sorry I left them out, so we're going to cover rest of them. We just talked about the bats at Evans and the peach tree seeds that I tried to plant, um, E.B. Mountain and so on. Well I forgot one story and that was the dogs, the wild dogs that came into the goat yard one morning and uh, I guess I'll just leave my coat on. The story goes like this. Every morning when we lived at Evans, I think the timing was not real good for the kids to help milk the goats. So I would get up, <clears throat> I think occasionally they did, but, but I think if my memory serves me, I think for mo the most part I did the chores in the morning, then they helped later in the day. And they were still home this particular morning. I go down from the house. It's a little incline to the goat yard and barn and I hear the most god-awful loud sounds going on and the goats were screaming and if you've ever heard a goat scream, they do scream when they're being terrorized or if they're really really upset. And I immediately I focus into the, the goat yard and here are two dogs attacking the goats. And they weren't just attacking the little goats, they already had degutted my little prize buck, beautiful little Nubian buck that I had for breeding purposes when he got a little older. He was about six months old and they had ripped him apart it was just awful. It was just terrible. And they were working on Dottie, one of our best, most sweetest milkers. And they had her down on her side and they were chewing on her and I screamed at the top of my voice. I said, kids, bring the gun, bring the gun. And they knew the only gun we had at the time was a 22 um, rifle. And they ran down as fast as they could, and I guess the thing was loaded, because I didn't have to load it, and it was a good thing, and I took aim, and I killed one of the dogs, put him flat down, dead or in a doornail, and I wounded the other one, and it took off as fast as it could go, even though it was wounded, because I know I got him. Probably a, a shoulder shot or something like that, but nevertheless. So I, I just didn't even want to look at the damage that they had done, but they had done serious damage. And that night, 
I believe Bob, when Bob came home, I, I didn't have the I didn't have the courage to take that 22 and finish Dottie off. The little buck, he was already dead. And uh, I just didn't have the courage to kill my milk and my milker. She was so, s oh my God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be making these when I'm so emotional tonight. She was my sweetest milker. Just a sweetheart of a goat, and uh, when Do when we didn't have cell phones back then, you know, we didn't have all this high tech crap that you do nowadays. So I had to wait for Bob to get home, and I told him right away what happened. And he put Dottie out of her misery, and then drug her body. Dad, I guess Dad was there at the time. I did. I kind of think, no, 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 no. Mom and Dad weren't there. And Bob drug her body. Shane may have helped because he was uh, he was probably about eleven, I don't know, somewhere in there. Anyway, they drug her body up the hill and buried her in the sand. At least it was easy digging because it was just sand, and and that was that. And uh, so shortly after that, the. Uh, I didn't add any animal back to the herd. That was it. It just started, our goat herd started dwindling down from there on. And so by the time we moved to Blue Creek, we just sort of had a skeleton. Um, well, that's kind of a crappy word to use. Just a few of the goats were left. And then when the marriage fell apart, I hired one of the drivers in town his name was Roy. I hired him to load up all of our animals and take them to Arlington, where back then, many years ago, they still had the auction barn going, and uh, put all the animals on the auction block, and like I said, got a few dollars for them and unloaded them, and didn't have to worry about farming anymore, and that... Uh, that ended my farming adventure. I, I am the